Good morning. Welcome. My name is Jen Griffin and I'm a deacon at the East Woodstock Congregational Church. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. As you can see, we're in a different location today. We're at Roseland Park to celebrate Earth Day. I'm so glad we can be together in this way to worship. No matter who you are and no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And no matter where we find ourselves today during worship, we know that we are united in God's welcoming and loving spirit. We hope you will find out more about our church 
by looking at our website, eastwoodstockchurch.org. You can find lots of information, find out more about our church, find out the contact information for Pastor Sue and our whole wonderful staff, ways to donate to the church, and how you can get involved in outreach and hands-on work of the church. You are also invited to subscribe to our YouTube channel, East Woodstock Church. You can watch all the reflections, Bible studies, and worship services that are posted there. Later on in the service, we will be lifting up prayers. You can share your joys and concerns by typing into the comments. Someone will be writing them down so we can lift up those prayers together. Let us join our hearts together for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us pause for a moment and just be aware of the beauty around us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And let us sing our praise. Let us worship God in spirit and truth. Amen. Now let us join together in the hymn, Morning Has Broken. together in our litany which is again a call and response so I'm going to sing a line and I'm hoping that you'll sing back to me and we will lift up our praise that way holy 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 Lord God Almighty Lord God Almighty are full of your glory, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you, O Lord, blessed is the one who comes, blessed is the one who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. 
And our morning prayer is um, the one that we did last week as well, written by Joyce Rupp. And it is one that has movements to it. I think often um, it helps us to move while we pray. And so you're invited to do the, um, say the words and um, do the movements with me. So, I thank you for the gift of the new day. I reach out in compassion to my sisters and brothers throughout the world. I offer you all that I am and all that I have. I pray to be open to all that you offer to me today. I touch the earth, so if you can't touch the earth, at least point to the earth. I touch the earth with reverence, awe, and responsibility. May I stay closely united with you throughout the day. Amen. So we gather together near and far and we hear the good news that is given to us by God who loves us, that God so loved this world and every single person in it so much that God gave his only son. In Jesus Christ, we see God face to face and we hear of God's mercy. Standing therefore in Jesus Christ, I celebrate with you the good news that we are loved, we are forgiven, we are cherished by God. Let us rejoice in this today and always. Amen. Halle, halle, halle. thankful that Ben is here and Ben's going to provide our anthem for us called How Can I Keep From Singing.
storm can shake my inmost calm. What to that rock I'm clinging? Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Amen. So make sure you tell Ben what a great job he's doing because it's chilly out here and it's not easy to keep your fingers moving with the guitar. So thank you. Um, okay, so for children and for those young at heart, I wanted to share with you a um, picture. So I'm going to get just a little bit closer. I hope you can see this. So um, the picture shows the world and um, you see? Um, the picture shows the world and being embraced, being enveloped by a loving figure. So maybe I think I'm imagining that that's God kind of surrounding the world with that kind of love. And I thought that was especially appropriate for Earth Day because um, the very first words of the Bible are in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And so God chose that. God chose to create the earth. God chose to create each one of us in God's image. And God chose to fill us with God's spirit. And now that the earth has been created, um, we're not alone. We are surrounded by God's love. And then God also, in that creation story, gave us the responsibility to care for God's creation. So that's really what Earth Day is all about. It is taking care of God's creation. It's doing things like recycling and picking up trash and um, not putting bad things into the earth or into the air. Um, it is taking care of God's creation because it is our responsibility. So it is a way that we reflect the love that God has for the earth and for each one of us. And we show our thanks by giving, by taking care of what God has given to us. So I hope, um, I hope that you'll send in pictures of what you're doing to take care of the earth, whether it's picking up trash or whatever that is that you're doing to take care of God's creation. We would love to see those pictures. Okay. All right. So we will join together in prayer and, um, give thanks that God is with us even when we can't see each other close by face to face um, and we'll pray that God will give us the strength that we need and to be with those who need God's help so let's pray together holy and loving God we give you thanks for beautiful places like this we thank you that we are surrounded by your creation that we can hear the birds sing that we can see the beauty of the water the glory of the sky and the amazing productivity of your earth that gives us plants and feeds us and cares for us. Help us to take care of your creation and help us to take care of each other. Be with those who are in special need of your care and your strength. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus tells parables to teach us about God and about God's kingdom. The stories about small items being lost remind us that God cares about the least of these and that each one of us is important in God's sight. Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, 
Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May God add the blessing to the reading of these words. Amen. So a lot of times people ask me um, how to read Bible stories and um, because a lot of the Bible stories are quite short. So the story that Jesus um, told that we just heard Jen read is actually two small stories put together. And you know, if you're just going to read that on your own, you could read it very quickly. And then you might wonder, well, what did that just say? And why was that important? And why is that included in the Bible anyway? And so one way to read Bible stories is to try to imagine yourself, try to, try to imagine yourself as one of the characters and to think about who the characters are in the story and which one that you might relate to. Now some of the stories have lots of different characters and your answer might be different on different days. So on one day you might feel like someone who's very powerful and that might be part of the story. Or there might be another time when you feel like another character in the story. In these two stories, these stories about the lost sheep and the lost coin, there's actually only two characters. There is the person who lost something, and there is the thing that was lost. So I think if you think about the story, that you could probably relate maybe to any each one of those things. Um, and it might depend on how you're feeling today. So certainly we all know what it is like to lose something to be that person who has lost something that is of great value. And in these days that we're sharing together during the pandemic, there are many things that we have lost. We have lost um, plans. We have lost our calendars in many ways. A lot of people have told me they've lost track of time, not even knowing kind of like what day it is. And one day sometimes feels a lot like the next. Um, we've lost the ability to plan ahead. When people ask me about events at the church, I find myself saying a lot, I don't know. I don't know. Because we've lost the ability to say definitely what will happen and when it will happen. Um, we've lost the ability to see each other. We've lost the ability to visit. Um, I know I'm missing visiting my parents. I know there are lots of people that you're missing as well. So first part of the story might be just to name what it is that we have lost, what it is that we're missing, what it is that feels like a lack in us. And I hear that invitation in that story to just name it and put it before God and say, this makes me sad inside. It makes me feel an emptiness inside. It makes me feel like part of me literally is missing. And so I have lost something. So maybe when you hear that story about the shepherd who has lost a sheep or the woman who has lost a coin, maybe you can relate to the person who has lost something. Um, or um, maybe you'll remember the effort that you have put in. I know that you have lost something in your time, whatever it was, that might have been something simple like a wallet. Well, that's not simple, but you know, something tangible um, uh, or an important paper or something that's like, I just had this. Um, you know, it could be something as simple as the clicker for the TV. It's like, where is it? And then the effort we can also um, relate to in the story. Because sometimes we say things like, I tore the house apart. Or, I looked everywhere. Or, I will look until I find it. I'm not going to give up. And sometimes we go to extremes, like we look through the trash, you know, to see if we threw it out by mistake. Or we look in places where it couldn't possibly be, sometimes it is. Uh, we look under things. So the great deal of effort, we need to remember that as part of that person who has lost something. So that may be part of the story that you relate to. 
Or maybe when you hear the story, you might relate to the thing that has been lost, the sheep or the coin. Because I think all of us have found ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. All of us might have been going down the wrong path at some place, at some point in our lives. Sometimes we feel lost, like we don't know what direction we should be going in. We don't know what's next. We don't feel like we have a strong pull one way or the other. That feeling of being lost, of wondering if anyone is missing us, if one, wondering if anyone notices that we're feeling lost, all of that is not a good feeling. That feeling of being missing, of missing part of ourselves, maybe missing confidence or direction or the ability to be healthy or the ability to go forward. So there's a, a lot to that, of that we could sit with that feeling about what does it feel like to be the one who is lost. So then as we listen to the, um, the story, you might wonder, what does all this have to do with Earth Day, Pastor Sue? Well, this is how I was pulling all of this together in my mind, was that there's this great deal of effort going on for something that's very small. It's one little sheep. There's 99 safe ones, but one little sheep took all of that effort. It was one coin, whereas there's still a purse full of coins, but one coin was missing, and all of that, all of that effort was necessary in order to find it. I hear in that great encouragement to us that God searches for us without abandon, that God will look for us forever until we are found always calling us home. And also, there is that honoring of small efforts and large ones, but that idea that our efforts matter. So when I was talking to the children before about what we can do for Earth Day, the idea of recycling or doing something small to take care of the Earth or the small efforts that you make, that phone call that you make, the email that you send, the card that you, that you put out, the neighbor that you tend to, the efforts that we do, they all matter. It is an honoring of the small things, the small efforts that come together to make a huge difference. And so maybe there is one last character in the story because when those things are found, when the sheep is found, when the coin is found, the person brings it back and there is great rejoicing. So I would call those people the encouragers. And maybe that will be a role that we will play, that we will encourage ourselves, that we will encourage each other, that we will say, you can do this. You can do this small thing and it will make a difference and we will help you. And when something is successful for you, we will come together to rejoice. So there is that, that encouragement to all of us to make the effort, look for that lost thing, seek, and we will find. Know that God wants us to be found and that God is with us when we come together, that we can encourage each other and we can say together we are able to do these things. And together, we will form our community, and together, we will give worship and praise to God. Amen. So, Roger's been writing down prayers, joys, and concerns. So Beth would like us to continue prayers for someone who's very special to her, so we want to do that. And when any of these concerns are named, they might remind you of your own concern. So we will join in this particular prayer, and then we'll also lift up our own prayers for our own special people that we're worried about or concerned about. So very prayers for this special person, prayers for Jasmine and prayers for all of those who are in skilled nursing areas and assisted living, nursing homes, hospitals. We want to um, pray for Dory's uncle who's in a rest home with Parkinson's and he has the COVID virus. So prayers for him and then of course for all of those who are affected by the virus. We want to um, pray for Phil um, who um, you know from uh, who is part of the jazz band that comes on our jazz Sunday who's back in the hospital So we're lifting up prayers for him 
and for his family. And we want to pray for kindness and health for all people. Um, and someone, that, Lucy, writes that she's very glad to be here. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you're all here. So um, there's just four of us standing here, spread apart. Um, but we're all imagining all of you. And so we're united in spirit that way. And um, giving thanks for this outdoor service. And I give thanks too. I give thanks to, to Rosalind for um, welcoming us and giving thanks to God for this beautiful place that we have. So whether your joys or concerns are spoken out loud or whether they are kept in your heart, however it is that you pray, we prayed this morning with motions, you can write your prayers, you can say your prayers, there's so many ways to pray. All of those prayers are cherished by God. Knowing that, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, creator of all that we see, we are in awe of the beauty all around us, the birds singing, the beauty of the water, the magnificence of your creation. We give you thanks. Help us to soak up the love that you surround us with. Help us to remember that you chose to create us and all that we see, and that you surround us with your creative presence now and always. We thank you for your strength, for your love, for your comfort. We thank you that we can be united in spirit, even as our hearts might miss one another and how we wish that we could gather together to lift up our voices as one. We trust that you hear our voices and that we are as one in, in you. We lift to your care people who are in special need of your comfort and your healing presence to be with those people who are dear to our hearts, those people that we worry about, those people that we care about, those people that we might not be able to see, but that we carry always with us. We ask you to bless them and surround them with your healing presence, to give them the strength and the comfort that they need. We ask you to be with Dory's uncle and with all of those who are affected by the COVID virus, to be with them in this time of struggle and to be with those who wish that they could visit but cannot, to be with the caretakers and all the important workers in the hospital. We ask you to be with Jasmine and with all of those in hospitals and nursing homes. We ask you to surround them and to remind them that they are not alone, but instead are lifted up by our prayers and by your presence. Gracious and holy God, help us not to go through day after day without pausing. Help us to give thanks. Help us to be aware of your presence and help us to be filled with your spirit so that we can reach out that we can seek for those who are lost, so that we can reach out to those who are lonely, so that we can care about your children and reflect your hope and love. We come before you just as we are and we offer to you our prayers. To you be the honor and glory dominion and power now and forever. Amen. We've been talking about giving and gratitude and I want to express my gratitude for all the ways. It's very exciting actually in some ways to see all the things that are coming in and through the church so people leave things on our doorstep. So I want you to know that that effort continues and that there are people who are um, bringing meals to those who need them. There are There's food being delivered not only to the hospital food pantry but also to daily bread. So those food donations can continue to be left at the church. Um, there are prayer shawls being dropped off and masks. 
We have a great need for masks. Um, Tom Stokes has let us know about the people that he works with um, in, um, in housing developments near and far all throughout the um, Eastern United States, so we're collecting um, masks for them. So all of those efforts are a part of our gratitude, giving thanks for what we have and expressing that gratitude by giving it further. Um, there are also ways for us to give to the church, and you can find that on our website and on the Facebook page, and know that all of those gifts are received with gratitude. So knowing that we are richly blessed by God, let us sing our song of praise. Give thanks with a grateful heart to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given us Jesus Christ. Um, and we'll join together in our final hymn, which is For the Beauty of the Earth. And we're going to sing two verses of this and give thanks to God for the beauty that God has given to us. into our lives, whether we are very close to home or venturing a little farther forward, we know that we go forth surrounded by the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the strength and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's bless one another with our song of peace. Mm -hmm. 